Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to take you through a technique that I like to describe as wet distress. This is a chalk paint finish technique. It will give you that authentic chippy look. The look that everybody looks, the romantic aged look to a piece of furniture. I have in this video kind of gone a little bit more contemporary, Mediterranean in style, but you can use it across um, any old piece with lots of carved details and multi layers of colours in this technique, but I've done it very simply. And um, the reason being I've kept it simple and kept the colour washes simple over the top is because it was part of my Painted Love Academy. So this was part one of six in the masterclass and that was designed to share with you different techniques so you could amalgamate them into one. You will get to see all of these tutorials. I'm gonna bring them all out in succession so you can do just the same as my Painted Love Academy students. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you think of the technique and how you would use it. Okay guys, just to get you in the swing of me interjecting into these videos with voiceover, here I am just talking about the actual piece that I'm gonna be working on. I believe this is a South African piece of furniture. I have actually worked on something very similar when I was in South Africa teaching there. It's not without its failures. It's got one or two um, pieces missing from it, a few chips. The finish has kind of gone on it. And equally, I know that these pieces of furniture from South Africa really do kick back a lot of issues when it comes to painting. That's why I've chosen to go with a darker colour. Um, the colour that I'll be working with today is probably a mix of Florence and Givigny, something really bright and zesty, kind of contemporary. Also, just to add, all preparation for this piece was done off camera before filming. Just a good old clean down with soap spirit, ready for that first coat of paint. We're gonna go straight away with the base coat of old white. Now, I'm not gonna worry about how much I get on. I don't wanna get a full coverage. Um, all I'm thinking about is getting, let's get pick up a little bit of paint. It's all about the high ground, so anywhere we, you know, when we distress back, these low ground bits are not as important because they're not really gonna, we're not gonna get any distressing into them, but it's all about any corner and edge. But we're just gonna, and if you notice, I haven't took the drawers out for this part either. It's just get the paint on. Again, this bit's not gonna be distressed in here to the, the old white. It's just about all the high ground. So I'm lucky, we can paint over everything, have real fun. It might require two quick coats for this, really to bed it in. And if you was doing this in non, not like me in the workshop, trying to get this whole video done for you in one day, if, if what I would advise is to do this coat um, the day before, so it, the paint has really, um, the time to harden. You really want, on some distressing techniques, I don't leave it to harden. I literally go one coat, let it dry, next coat, let it dry, and then on with the distressing technique. But with this, I'd like that first coat of old white to harden as much as it can be. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna get what we're gonna get. And as you can see, it's sort of, it looks really messy. Nothing that I do is about neatness. Everything I do is about the organic growth. So never be worried. This is what I'd say on my real life workshops. Go for it, have fun. Don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, just let it be organic and flow. You'll find the paint will do it for you. It, there's nothing technical about it. You just let the paint teach you. This is how I've learned along my journey. I've learned by lots of happy accidents. And they're the things that sing in a piece with sort of texture and chippiness. 
the happy accidents are the things that make it. What, what also may happen when we get down to the, the, the fun part, the coloured parts of this project, things might happen where we get too much distressing, but I will give you those techniques to try and stand back and take a look at your project and realise what's not right about it and where to take it out. So there was, there's always a way to fix a problem with the paint. Once again, I'm using a medium size Annie Sloan uh, paintbrush. Again, I, I like to use this brush because of the, the amount of texture that's in the piece, this ripply wavy effect. It helps me get into those different indentations and it helps spread. So it, it's a perfect brush for this. There is other brushes on the market. I don't use them. I just use Annie's for this sort of technique. Um, you can use um, chip brushes. It will do the same thing. This is just quicker for me, much quicker and getting the paint spread it around. So you can see most of this, the indentation, the high ground, I'm making sure that there's plenty of paint on them. We are gonna do two coats of this old white. A lot of these techniques do take a few coats, but fine coats are, are great. So you can see there's a translucency to this. Um, but that's for a reason, it'll dry quicker, we can put the next coat on. So that's why we're, we're just basically putting a scrub coat on first. And these coats are not really that important because they're, they're the only thing that's gonna show through is in the end, is when we distress it, we're just gonna get a little flex of white. So don't worry about these coats, you just want a full coverage coat on your end color. tends to guide me um, on the choices so not much of my work is pre-planned a lot of people ask me whether I've come up with the idea or the concept or does the piece of furniture come well in this case the piece of furniture found me and I've made the decision based on the style of the piece of furniture so these ripples are going to be ideal for this distressing look if it was very flat it's difficult to get that sort of chippy distress look on uh, where there's no detail so we're gonna make this detail thing. Here we are on day two and this piece has had um, a full 12 hours drying um, since last night and as you can see interestingly I hope the cameras can pick this up the handles um, ha, are much whiter than uh, the wooden parts of this and this is one of those pieces that has got rich in tannin and it's the chalk paint has dragged it to the surface so unfortunately if this was a commission piece I know some of you do commission work you'd be very upset at this point if you was painting old white but luckily for us we're going to do something really fun with it and if it wasn't a commission piece and you had this happen I would suggest that at this point you really do do some exciting like we're going to do and put a really vivid colour over this straight away and turn it into something beautiful. So obviously with a, an overnight sleep I've been thinking about this project all night. They usually keep me awake. So I talked about the colour and I wanted it to have this sort of beautiful um, continental feel you know harping back to my roots and uh, the, the two colours that I chose to mix together was Florence and Givigny. Um, but I thought, I'll, just before I mix up my, my tone, I'll play around on the mix mat. And um, I tried Amsterdam Green and with the Givigny and it, it ended up more of a muddy, a muddy tone. Um, and I really liked the Florence and the Givigny, but more Florence. And then I added a touch, just a tiny touch of um, old white just to lift the colour so we're going to mix this up in the bowl and uh, and then we'll have a little play and we can add a little bit more so this is how I mix my colours um, I always give the, the can a good stir we'll pour it straight from the can right, 
I'll use one of these to stir up and see if we can recreate this colour that I've made on here. It's a bit like baking a cake. Now for me that's still too blue. I want some more of the green tone in here so we're going to add a little bit more to build up those green tones and then we'll put some of the old white in to lift it in with a touch of old white or pure. The old white will have some yellowy tones to it so it'll add more of that into that green. I'm happy. Turquoise. So all, I, all that's left to do now is remove the drawers. This time we're going to remove the drawers because I need to get this inner edge all the way around. So we're going to paint the drawers out of the carcass. So we're going to take each drawer out, uh, place it on the workstation. Oh, Pinny. That's what we need. Pinny as well. And we'll paint the outside edges with our new mixed colour. We're just going to place a little bit on so you, we can see the colour. Look at the vibrancy of this tone. We'll go through the middle of here. Awesome turquoise colour. So this coat, we're, we're going to probably um, apply two coats. It's a strong colour but we do need to block out all of the old white. Um, for the distressing technique later. I am in love with this colour mix. Um, colour mixing is one of my favourite things to do um, because it makes you unique. You know, um, Annie's colours were all made to be mixed together so you could create any tone um, that you what would, you know, what you would like. Um, infinite amount of colours can be made. So, this is a unique mix and I think once it's distressed and some of the white coming through and maybe a bit of the brown of the wood, we're going to end up with a very interesting piece which will probably sit very well in most homes. This would sit wonderfully well against a blank canvas. Um, I like to use furniture you know, people are frightened of placing colour in the home and I like to put um, the odd piece of furniture with a poppy colour and it can make a room, absolutely make a room. So you can have your, your old whites and your Paris greys but you can place a piece of furniture in like this and it just lifts the room and it's a talking point in your home. So this is what I'm happy doing, adding colour to people's home. What's life without a bit of colour? So this colour is absolutely wonderful for coverage. Um, if we was painting it over the brown, it'd probably been one coat coverage. So um, I'm really happy. It's covering the old white really well. Um, it, whilst we're doing the, the whole process, we, we will add probably half a coat more. So I'll go back and touch some areas where I think it's a little bit dull, like on here. Um, and it, then we'll be ready for the distressing part. And I want to talk about this dressing, but I will talk about as we're going through it. To get a natural, authentic look, you need to think about the whole piece of furniture. So, in its life, where would it get all of the natural knocks and chips, which will be down here? A lot more at the surface, because people kick furniture, or in more recent years, vacuum cleaners will bump it. So, we're going to do, we're going to talk about that as we're doing it, and I'll, I'll run through the whole distressing technique. Um, but yes, this colour is fabulous. I'm so, so happy. It just makes me joyful inside when we've got colour like this um, and it's going on so beautifully. So let's enjoy the colour. I'm painting any what way, um, cross hatching across. So this helps with a distressing technique because what it's doing, it's adding layers of paint, so th different thicknesses. So when we add water and we remove the paint, it, the paint will allow it to take certain areas, but not, not everywhere. So the thicker areas are not going to come off as easy as the thinner areas. So this is going to help with the whole 
distressing technique. Um, basically, the paint will do this distressing for you and it will really help. So um, that's why I'm painting, instead of neat lines, we don't want neat lines, we want any what way, and this will all help and it will add the character and texture to the paint. So as I said earlier on, we talked about the hardware. These are a certain sort of hardware that don't screw through the back and they're very difficult to take off so we've painted over them and for that more contemporary look you might want to just keep it as it is, painted over, distressed, done. Um, I may change my mind and we may paint them out and do something interesting with them later. Um, what I will see as I go because I like to feel the project and, and see how, um, how it ends up with the distressing to see if otherwise we could clutter the whole of the piece up with a lot too many things going on so I'd rather um, paint and then see um, these drawers as well they've got a thin edge and which is great so there's no need to masking tape on up to an edge because I can work to that edge which is ideal which is really nice um, I'm keeping the natural wood it's dovetailed, beautiful dovetails in this. I want to keep them and I will probably just add a bit of wax so the glide's better on the drawer. Um, water, we've got to talk about water, applying water to your brush. Um, some people apply it, add water to the paint. I've now painted in, in other countries and in warmer climates, I think there is a need to add water to your paint, just a touch of water. Um, here, we're a bit cooler and the paint doesn't dry as quick as in, as in the sunshine. So I just always dab my brush into the water, take off excess on the edge of the brush, and then touch the paint, take it off the edge of that bowl and apply it. And it should be just enough. It certainly does work well here in the UK just to get that, that flow to your brush. Um, and you can do that for a couple of passes um, to the paint and it should be enough to keep the paint moving. A lot of people would say stop right now because this piece looks amazing, this colour. Absolutely gorgeous. But I'm not teaching you how to just paint one coat we're going to go for advanced techniques. So this is my way of wet distressing with two tones of colour. Normally I would mix up a wash at this point and it could be another colour. So I could use a graphite wash and wash over the whole piece and any indentation that goes inwardly, the, the graphite wash would sit in there, a bit like the dark waxing that you can do, you can add that afterwards. But I want to keep the crispness of the colour to the whole piece with the old white poking through and maybe a little bit of the, the timber that's beneath that. So the way that I'm going to do keep the crispness of the colour is we're going to use the leftovers. So in the bowl, as you can see, I mixed plenty. It's had one and a half coat. So I've gone back and touched up anywhere where I've seen any white but it's left a lot of um, paint left in the bowl and I never waste anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this into a container and I've got lids for these containers and I save everything. So I never want waste because this is such a great color and I may mix other colors to it later. There we go. So that'll go in there, out of the way, stored and the bowl that with the leftovers and the water that I was dipping my brush in, we're gonna add the water to the bowl and this is gonna make my wash. So, and we're gonna use the same brush. We're just gonna allow this water. It's gonna get messy. Um, so you don't wanna be working in your kitchens. You need to be outdoors or in your workshops or cover your floors because you will splash this paint everywhere it's so runny and all we're going to do is it's, it's like giving another coat of paint really but it's very runny so we're adding moisture back to the piece so this is just going to again we've talked about this before in other videos it's loosening the paint adding moisture back 
to the piece. So I kind of want to make sure I get nearly everything covered. As you may see, I've put all of the drawers back together because when I distress, I don't want the drawers separate. I want them together so I can look at, view the whole piece distressed as one whole thing. So again, have fun, get, get messy, get that moisture back into the paint. The reason I'm not doing this with, uh, let's say, a plant spray or, you know, with fresh water, you will get watermarks. So that's why I want it to be tinted. And if you do it with this plant spray, what you'll find is where it's spritzed, it will bring, it will bring back little dots, little uh, points of where the sprays hit it and moistured it earlier. So don't do it with that. Just do it with your brush. Get the um, moisture back into the piece. You have to work quite quick and get it over the whole piece. It's a little annoying because you want to take your time over these things, but not in this case. Just get some moisture on the whole thing. And what you might find when you're adding the moisture back to it, you might see bits pulling away on its own. So you'll see it will start distressing itself almost with the water. Um, but the trick is to iron out the watermarks with a soft lint three cloth with more water on it. So we'll have a, a wet cloth and a dry cloth. And there we go. I think I'm happy with that. So, so lint three cloth, an old pillowcase, perfect for the job. Bucket of water to hand. Bring the cloth right out. And this is your tool. Use it like a, like a paintbrush. And we're gonna work. We're gonna think about the distressing techniques. We're gonna work from the bottom up. This would be the least distressed. This would be the most distressed. And we're just gonna dab and move the paint. Look, here we go. So this is the fun. We're going to bring wood and white back. It's just giving it a, like, like what, um, it's a little bit like cleaning a baby's face. So gently does it. You wouldn't rub too hard. You can build up that. And we're going to take the corners, any edge, this lower edge here. So it's, it's giving it that faded, bring back the white. It's magical, really. You'll have so much fun doing this. And I would say here. So this is what I, I would call wet distressing. Other people would do it other ways. You could do it a sim more simpler way with a baby wipe maybe. But I like to do it this way. Certain areas. And you need to keep on coming back and checking where the balance of the, the project sits. So I want to get more here on these knuckles. Each knuckle would have a, a little bit more distressing. A lot of people also ask me how to do a chippy look, and this is my quick technique to a chippy look. Whilst the moisture's in the paint, you can take the end of um, a, a brush, a wooden brush, and you can just knock areas a little bit. Just kind of put the brush into the areas, and then you can use a clean cloth and just rub it a little bit and what happens it creates a little chip so on here we'll do it a bit heavier so where it might get a chip back of a brush towards the edge it kind of bruises it you can add a bit of moisture to it and then rub a bit harder and you, you should get little chips there you go so that's a really nice clean way of getting chips along the edge of a, a piece of furniture. But for now, we're gonna keep on working on adding, sort of coming back to the old white on the edges, which I think looks absolutely gorgeous on this color. And I think this is looking quite nice. 
So I think I'm going to keep the edges on each end of each one a little bit more worn. Less as we go up to the top, but go heavier here. Again, standing back. A little bit up there. Along the edge, where would it get lots of wear near the keyhole? So that would get more wear and tear. Tops of these, the edge of this would get most of the wear. See how I'm not being frightened of the paint. I'm going to allow it to do what it needs to do. And if I don't like it, I'll go back and paint it back out and then distress it again. So never fear of the paint. Especially a piece with lots of detail. This piece has got lots of detail, so it's kind of working it itself. But where, somewhere where it's more flat, I'll come around the other side. I'm just going to add more water to my cloth. We have a flat surface. Um, let's see if I move this round a little bit. There. So we have more of a flat surface here. I'm going to allow it to, if I go around in circles, because I put the paint on in thick and thin areas, it should just bring itself back a little bits of white. So you can see where it's poking through. And I'm just going to allow it to there and there and then that should be enough for that we'll just go round round the edge and just sharpen those fluted edges up on there and that should be enough so i'm liking this more on the corners of course distressing would happen more on edges and corners not so much on the top um, all I've done with that, I have done it, but I'm, I've just gone in circular motions, just soft circular motions, just to allow it to, there's a little bit that's come back on the top, but I'm not going to go much further than that. Lots on the feet. That's a lovely bit. I'm really happy with that bit. And I think we're gonna do a treatment to the handles to bring them back to life, most definitely. But basically, that's how you wet distress. I am extremely happy with the distressing on the piece. I, I think it's perfect, but the only thing that I'm not too happy about is the handles, which has always been a bone of contention from the beginning to now. If you wanted a contemporary look, then maybe this is great. You could carry on distressing back to the old white on the handles, but I want to bring back the sort of original look to them, so the warmth of gold. So the way that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna uh, mix up a colour. So I'm using en fleur, which is, is a little too warm for me. So I've added en fleur and um, added graphite to it. So if you can see, there's two, there's the lid of the en fleur. If I hold these to camera, you can see there's definitely a difference. This is a darker brown and I'm much happy with that tone. So all we're going to do is with an artist brush, we're going to carefully take our time and paint paint back in the handles so we're using a brown the custom mix brown to paint everything back in and then once this is dried we're gonna you could add a little bit dark wax um, but we're gonna add probably some warm gold gilding wax to bring back that luster of gold against this wonderful jewel color this does actually require a lot of patience, but anyone that paints furniture will really realize that the whole thing does require a lot of patience. And this is partly why I do it, because I find this very cathartic and relaxing. And these are the bits that make the project more interesting. So I think it's worth the effort and again, we didn't have to get the screwdriver out to remove these handles, and I'd far rather have a paintbrush in my hand than a screwdriver. 
all the handles are, uh, are now painted and I've pieced the whole piece back together. Um, I've slightly changed the order of the drawers because I felt like this drawer was up here and I wanted to make the, the more distressed drawer at the bottom. So I've, I've altered them around, which I could do with this piece. Um, and I'm happy with where it needs to be. Um, the handles look great just as they are uh, this colour. This is on flare graphite mix. They look a little bit like rust and I quite like that look. But we're going to go a bit further and add some um, dark wax and some gilding wax just to bring back some luster of gold coming through. But for now it's about just getting the clear wax on first because you must do that before any of the gilding waxes or tinted waxes. So we're going to work uh, with some clear soft wax over the whole piece and we're just going to go straight over the handles every what way, just get the wax you know, onto the piece. What I would like to say is, as you can see, I'm using my brush into the wax uh, part straight onto the piece. I would always say decant your wax out of the part because this is such a vivid colour and you don't want to contaminate the wax in the tin. Um, but this one's nearly empty. So I'm not worrying about it. I'm nearly to the bottom of this tin and I'll be moving on from that tin. So uh, this will help not to contaminate any of your colours. Right, for the handles, I've been mixing some gilding waxes. I've also got in my, in my bowl, I've got some dark wax. Um, so I've been mixing warm gold with bright gold um, in there. We're gonna go with the dark wax first. So the dark wax is not really for the, um, it's not really for the surface of this. It's just to go around the edges of this to knock out that line of where it was connected around the edges, um, just stippled in to the edges of that. So I don't, want, I don't want to dirty the whole piece up with dark wax. It's more for in the connections to hide any of the weird connections between the paint edge uh, from the enfleur to the, the beautiful Provence. Um, say Provence, it's not Provence, it's um, my own custom mix. It looks very like Provence. Giverny and Florence. It's darker than Provence. So that's all I'm going to do with that. And what we're going to do is just lift the handle up and try and blend it away. So it's just tucking into little areas. And because we've got plenty of clear wax on this, this will allow me to clear the edges. So it's just adding a little bit of age and patting around the edge of the handle happy with that. So now we can go with some of the gilding wax. You could use your brush and just tickle over it, but I'm going to use my finger because I like this sort of way of applying it. So bringing, bringing back some of the, the goldiness to it. It's quite nice, this warm sort of gold. Characterful. knock it back a little bit. So I think it looks quite good that warmth of the gold against the, the bluey green tones. Once again getting the dark the dark wax around the edges and tucked into these little nuts and crannies. It blurs the boundaries. Um, there we go. And what I found is we'll add a little bit Oh, what I must say as well, always check your manufacturing instructions with these products. I'm using my bare finger, but it does say to use rubber gloves. Um, so don't do as I am without reading the instructions. Um, these products kind, can be quite harmful, these uh, gilding waxes, so be careful with them. 
always read manufacturing instructions. Um, and what I'm finding is that I'm going also back over, it can be too bright for me. I want this sort of rusty look. So I'm just gonna tap over with the dark wax and, and knock back some of that brassy gold and just blend it in. And I'm happy with that. You can see there is a definite tonal change from this one above to this one below. So um, just by hitting it with a bit of dark wax here and there. So that's why I'm using the wax the wax is in a bowl as an artist palette, so this really helps to create that more interesting dynamic look to these handles. So there you go, top ones have been done, bottom ones haven't. You can definitely see a dip tonal difference. <laughs>